Hi guys, today I will tell you why I chose to build the Goat Island Skiff. But first, I want to thank you all for your support. After three years, the channel finally reached 10,000 subscribers. That's after three years of videos and a lot of fun. So, thanks again guys. It all really started with the build of the goat, so it's only fair that I talk a bit more about it. And before I go on, I want to make sure that you understand I have no affiliation with the designer whatsoever. I make no money in any way by doing this video and talking about the, this boat. I'm just a person who built a goat island skiff and shared it online. So this is just my story and my opinion. Take it for what it is. I really wanted to build a boat because I can remember my dad building a small dinghy, probably about 10 feet sailing dinghy when I was six and that's the first time I went sailing. So. I had to build one as well. I first saw the goat, I think, uh, around the start of the millennium. Internet has just gone mainstream, so information wasn't much, content even less. So all the boats I knew, uh, I saw on magazines like plastic boats or wooden boats. I also bought uh, Dynamite Payson Instant Boats, I think it's called. And on the look for um, the perfect boat, <laughs> obviously. Uh, none of them ever ticked all the boxes, so I just kept looking. So one day I was surfing and I came across some photos of the Goat Island Skiff. And the first thing that struck me was how elegant the lines were. Uh, and I know looks are not everything, right? But you guys know that looks is what gets you chasing in the first place, right? <laughs> anyway, and of course, me being me, I tried to find as much information as I could on the goat, which was much at the time and then I fell in love with the design. Um, I spent the next 20 years looking at boats because at that time I was in the UK, I had no way of building a boat there. And all during all this time, every time I thought I had found a new one, I would come back to the GOAT. So what made the GOAT a winner in my books? Well, I needed a boat that was simple to build, not many building materials so it, so it could be cheap to build as well had to be fast because we only have four to five hours to sail here due to the tides. Uh, I needed a, to have a simple rig, um, one that I could put up and down in, well, five minutes, well, less than that, actually. And that's it guys, it's ready to take down the ramp if I want to. That's how easy it is, even with a bad wrist. Beautiful boat. Um, I wanted just the one sail so I could be more relaxed while sailing and also I had to be a good performer. 
He also had to carry three to four people and some camping gear so I could go to the island and take the wife and the kids or my parents or some friends. So I was looking for something around 14 to 16 feet. Could be sailed, rowed or motored if necessary. Roomy enough so I could do some fishing aboard. And a high freeboard was desirable so I could spend most of the time dry and <laughs> not soaked. And all that while being light enough for a single person to launch it by hand or even car top it if necessary. So we're talking about laser dinghy kind of weight. And of course, it had to be fun to sail. I don't know about you, but this is a lot to ask from a single boat. But Michael Storer delivered all this in one single design, the Goat Island Skiff. So the build, how it happened. Well, I lost my job in 2019, so in December of that year, I decided if I'm ever going to have time to build a boat, now is it, now it's the time. And what a good decision that was, because if we all we all remember, I'm sure that the bug strike just a few weeks later, and I, I had plenty to do during lockdown. So I started building my perfect boat. Unfortunately, it didn't start the best way, because the only plywood I could find locally and cheap enough was waterproof birch plywood which is 30 percent heavier than a standard marine ply although it's five to six times cheaper here in portugal so that fact alone would take one of the advantages of the goats away being car toppable but i could live with that since everything else on the design was still true and actually wasn't a bad thing see since i wasn't limited by the weight anymore sort of I could actually start thinking of making my own mods to the design. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> and as I progressed with the build, I start having some ideas, like this extended mid seat. Uh, this was not just for flotation, was actually more to carry gear in there. Of course, adding extra struts and hatches and all that, and more plywood, heavier plywood, of course, uh, meant that a 60 kilo boat now weighed around 90 or 50% more than it should. And although being a fatty goat, it still came out of the workshop about 600 man hours later. It could have been a lot less, but I spent a lot of time just thinking about mods, building tools for the builds and making parts instead of ordering like the gudgeons. Um, and of course, some over the top stubbornness when it came to the finishing touches. It could have been a lot less, but I don't regret it. It's here and it's good. Anyway, the summer came and due to the bug, I couldn't get my hands on uh, more hatches. These ones were not in place when I launched. Of course, I didn't cut the hole in there before I actually got the hatches, thank God. The downhole was just tied to the gunnel on that side, but to the water she went with just the one hatch and no cleats, but it had to be certified as a safe and saleable vessel by the maritime authorities. And it did pass with flying colors, by the way. Awesome. And since then, I have sailed her hundreds of times in the now four seasons I have her. Uh, of course, I added some more stuff. I developed a quick reefing system by exchanging ideas with the other owners on the Facebook group. Uh, I added padded seats there, uh, more hatches, side tanks, lazy jacks, and a few other bits and bobs. But was the boat perfect? No, of course not. <laughs> no boat is. So what are the cons with this design? I can only think of one that really, really matters to me, to be honest, is the insufficient flotation for a boat with such a high freeboard. Unfortunately, this is a, I see this in a lot of designs for cruiser dinghies and I find that a bit worrying. But as far as I know, the GOAT was not designed to be a cruiser. So, Michael, I'll let you get away with this one. <laughs> okay, back to the poor flotation. Not that the boat would sink, it will not, but it means that after a, a capsize, this will have tons of water in there. And no matter what 
tactics you try to not be on the center board or not, there would be a lot of water in there and it would take a long time to bail. It's doable, no problem, it's a bit unstable, it's okay if the weather permits. I'll see, I tried this uh, as a test, I never capsized the boat to be honest, but I did it on purpose and on the tests I saw it was unstable when flooded and I thought, well, if I'm caught in rough weather, in this heavy chop with short period we have here in the estuary and the river, I might not be able to bail it out effectively without the waves or the chop just coming over the gunnel and flooding the boat again, if I could balance it. So I built the side tanks. And notice I said tanks, not seats. The main purpose of this is to prevent water from flooding when the gunnel goes under and to keep whatever water gets in the boat contained between these two surfaces so it doesn't reach the gunnel again making it a lot more stable and that proved to be a game changer I see the back or the bottom let's try now without my full weight on the dagger point If I had to pick one mod from all the mods I'm on, I've done on my GOAT, I'm not sure if I would pick the tanks or the lazy jacks, but probably the side tanks. Again, side tanks, not side seats. If you solo your goats, please do yourself a favor and sit as close as possible to the mid seat or actually on the mid seat or in this direction. That's where I have my pads, that's where I sail my goats. Keep that bow down in the water, you'll thank me later. And of course, my boat is now double the weight of a standard goat at around 120 kilos. Add the rigging, all the gear I carry in her at all times and that's just as heavy as I can drag up that ramp on my own but what a great boat she is
And there you have it guys, this is why I built a Gold Island skiff and I truly believe this is one of the best designs ever made for my needs of course although there's another dinghy that I still want to build which I believe is as versatile as the goat while being cart offable of course there's gonna be trade-offs it will add one or two boxes that the goat doesn't but will remove one or two that the goat has anyway I will tell you at a later stage with which dinghy that is if I can get enough money to build one this winter Meanwhile, if you guys can think of any design that ticks all the boxes as the goat does, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all for now guys, stay safe, see you next week.